Hello friends, good afternoon and welcome to EduSat live lectures. Dear friends, today in the topic of genetics, we will be talking about sex inheritance, uh, sex linked in inheritance. To discuss this topic, we have with us our subject expert Dr. Varunendra Singh Rawat. Dr. Rawat is assistant professor in department of zoology in Hindu College, University of Delhi. Without further ado, I would like to welcome sir to our studios and request him to start the lecture. Thank welcome, you. Sir. So dear friends, it is a common observation which we make every day that organisms of different species look different from each other. And within a species, a male organism looks very much different from the female organism. This difference not only lies in the uh, anatomical characters but also in physiology and various other behavioral characters. So a question arises in our mind. What causes these differences between the males and the females? Are these characters linked to the sex of the individual or there is an interplay of the genes and the environment or there is something else going on in the uh, uh, genome of the organism or the body of the organism? To answer these questions, today I will be discussing about inheritance which is linked to sex. Today I will be discussing specifically sex linked inheritance in organism taking examples from humans also inheritance of x linked recessive genes in humans inheritance of x linked dominant genes inheritance of y linked genes and sex influenced inheritance along with sex limited inheritance x and y here denote the x chromosome as and y uh, denote the y chromosome so the learning objectives for today's lesson will be the inheritance pattern of sex linked gene as well as distinguishing between sex linked, sex limited and sex, uh, sex influenced inheritance. As we all know that the characters are transmitted from one generation to next generation. This, transmit this transmittance is carried out by specific nucleotide sequence in the genome of the organism. These characters are coded by genes which is a specific sequence of nucleotide. Each gene can be assigned to one of the many chromosomes which are present in the organism. Each organism species has a different chromosomal complement number or complement group uh, system and specific genes can be assigned to specific chromosomes in each of the organism. There have been detailed studies of the genes and the chromosome of humans and specific genes have already been assigned to specific chromosomes in human beings. Now when we talk about chromosomes, there are basically two types of chromosomes. They have been categorized as two types. One type is that of non-sex chromosome which is also known as autosome. All the non-sex chromosomes are together categorized as autosomes and they occur as a pair of homologous chromosomes in diploid organism. The genes present on these chromosomes are necessary for maintaining the homeostatic state of the organism as well as carrying out the daily functions of this particular organism. A pair of homologous chromosomes have the same genes which are arranged in the same order. That means the locus of the genes in homologous uh, chromosomes is always similar. Though the two chromosomes of a pair might be having different allele which differ in the nucleotide sequence, still they will be present at the same position unless there is some chromosomal aberration like deletion, duplication or translocation. So for all the genes on the autosome, both the males and females have two copies because both males and females will be having a diploid set of autosome. However, the interesting part here is that in many animals and some of the plant species, one of the sexes contains a pair of unlike chromosome. And these chromosomes are involved in determination of the sex of the individual. 
So, the chromosomes which carry genes which determine the sex of the individual, which determine whether the individual is going to be a male or to be a female, these chromosomes are known as sex chromosomes. In most of the animal species studied, there is a distinct pattern of sex determination wherein one of the sex will be homogametic, that means it will be having two sex chromosomes of the same type, whereas the other sex will be having two different type of sex chromosomes. Like in humans, the females have XX chromosomes, whereas the males have XY chromosomes. As I already told that in humans, there are uh, there, uh, there is a Y chromosome in, uh, in males along with 1X chromosome, whereas in females there are 2X chromosomes and there are 22 pairs of autosomes in each of the individual who is normal. A normal male will be having 22 pairs of autosomes as will be a female who will also be having 22 pairs of autosome. The human Y chromosome is much smaller in size when it is compared to the size of X chromosome. So, there is a distinct disparity between the X chromosome size and Y chromosome size in the human being. This particular uh, plate shows the karyotype of the human, of a male in human uh, species. Karyotype is basically arrangement of chromosome according to their banding pattern, according to their size. And in this particular plate, we can see that there are 22 pairs of autosome along with a pair of sex chromosome which is X and Y in this particular case. If it was a female, then there would have been 2X present instead of X and Y. The size of Y chromosome can be seen clearly here. It is very much smaller in size when it is compared to the size of X chromosome. Though the Y chromosome carries a few genes, most of it, it is genetically inert. However, there occurs a region of pairing homology between the X chromosome and the Y chromosome for proper synapsing and segregation during meiosis. If there is no region which could synapse between the X, which could uh, cause synapses between the X and Y chromosome, there will not be proper segregation during meiosis and aberrant germ cells might result which might be carrying both X, Y chromosome. When this type, of, uh, this type of gamete is fertilized by a normal gamete, an individual will result who will be having abnormal chromosome number and this can result in many, uh, many different types of syndrome. However, it is to be noted that most genes present on the X chromosome are absent in the Y chromosome. Therefore, the genes which are present on X chromosome, they exhibit a unique pattern of inheritance when compared with the autosomal genes present in the autosomal chromosome. In this particular plate, a comparison has been made between the size of the X chromosome and Y chromosome. It can be clearly seen that there are homology regions between the X chromosome and Y, region, uh, y chromosome. There are regions which will cause synapses between the X chromosome and Y chromosome. And also there are certain genes, a few number of genes present on Y chromosome. However, most of the Y chromosome as can be seen by the shaded grey region is genetically inert, whereas X chromosome ha is having a large number of genes on it. With this background, I will move to uh, talking about inheritance which is linked to sex. The first, first time uh, the sex linked inheritance uh, term was used was in, uh, was in relation to linkage uh, with X chromosome. It was used to uh, describe the situation where genes present on X chromosome exhibit a unique pattern of inheritance. Whenever there are genes which are present on Y chromosome, there is another unique pattern of inheritance and this is known as Y linked inheritance. So, any genes which are present either on X chromosome or on Y chromosome, they show a distinct pattern of inheritance and the inheritance pattern of these genes is known as sex linked or termed as sex linked inheritance. First of all, the first study of sex linkage was done by Thomas Hunt Morgan. He was uh, carrying out studies, various genetic studies on Drosophila. 
He did an experiment in the year 1910 which established that there is a distinct X linkage in this organism. Thomas Hunt Morgan is known for his distinct contribution to the science of genetics and for his various contribution along with uh, description of X linkage, he was awarded Nobel Prize in Physiology in the year 1933. So for, for elucidating this particular uh, X linkage experiment, at that time Morgan was studying a specific mutation in the eye color of Drosophila. He was studying a mutation now known as white eye mutation. In Drosophila, the normal white wild type color is red and this uh, red color is dominant to white eye color. That means the gene which codes for red color is dominant to the gene which codes for white color. Whenever even a single copy of this gene is present in the organism, the organism will be having red eye color. However, for white color to appear on this uh, on the eyes of this organism, this particular organism should be having double homozygous, homozygous recessive condition of the white eye gene. This particular plate shows the different uh, eye colors in Drosophila, namely the red eye color and the white eye color. Though the structure of the eye remains same, the omatidia which are the building blocks of the compound eyes of insect stays same, but the pigment which is deposited in the eye is different in these cases, though the eye functions very normally. So it is not a deleterious mutation for Drosophila. So Thomas Hunt Morgan carried out an experiment in which he made reciprocal crosses. In these crosses, he took individuals who were of red eye color as well as white eye color. In the first cross, which is termed here as cross A, red eye female were mated with white eye male. The F1 progeny procured were red eyed, all the individuals whether they were male or whether they were female were red eye. 1 by 2 represent here that this cross gives 50 percent males and 50 percent females. When there was cross between the F1 individual, the F1 male, red eye male and F1 red eye female, the F2 progeny had females which were all red eye in color and males half of which were red eye color and half of which were white eye in color. The number obtained by Thomas Hunt Morgan is uh, represented in parenthesis below the, below the fraction. Thomas Hunt Morgan made a reciprocal cross wherein he changed the sex of the organism carrying a specific phenotype. So in cross B, he took females which were white eyed and he mated them with males which were red eyed. When this cross was made, the F, uh, F1 progeny uh, which, which, uh, which was got was female were all red eye color whereas male were all white eye color. When the cross was made between the males and females of the F1 progeny, both males and females were obtained and peculiarly it was seen that half of the males were white eye color whereas half of the males were red eye color as seen in the earlier cross. The difference lies in, this, in the second sex wherein the females were half of the females were red eye color and half of the females were white eye color. So what could explain this particular inheritance pattern? The typical Mendelian dihybrid cross results in F2 progeny which will be having the same phenotypic ratio in spite of the sex which is taken. That means the reciprocal crosses for a normal Mendelian hybrid ratio, uh, hybrid ratio will give individuals who will be having the same phenotype in same proportion. But what we see here is totally different from a normal Mendelian cross. Herein, whenever a reciprocal cross is made, there is change in the number of females, uh, white eye female which is getting procured when we change the sex of the individual. So Thomas and Morgan assumed that this inheritance pattern of white eye trait is somehow related to the sex of the parent who is carrying the mutant elite. And Morgan concluded that the white locus, the white uh, gene locus is present on X chromosome. 
and he said that both the gene that is white eye gene and the trait that is white eye trait are X linked. So, this was the first time that X linked term was used in the sign in the history of genetic. So, Morgan hypothesized that in males with white eyes the recessive allele is found on the X chromosome. However, its corresponding locus is absent from the Y chromosome because in Drosophila also the Y chromosome is smaller in size when compared with the X chromosome. So, the Drosophila male has X and Y chromosome whereas, Drosophila female has 2 X chromosome. So, the females will be having 2 copies of any gene in, in its genotype because it has 2 X chromosome whereas, any X linked gene is having uh, will be uh, present uh, represented in only one copy in the males because the males are X and Y. So, feel, uh, female has two available gene loci which can carry two alleles which might be same or different whereas, males will be having only one available locus for the genes on X chromosome. So, if the cross which Thomas Hunt Morgan made is re represented uh, along with the chromosome it can be represented as such. We can see that red eye female when mated with white eye male, the red eye female is having both because it is a pure bread line, it is having both the X chromosome carrying the wild type allele which codes for red eye and white eye female carries one X chromosome which is carrying white eye, uh, white gene, white allele. The gametes which are produced lead to formation of individuals which are male and female. The female is having one wild type allele and one mutant allele leading to formation of wild female, wild uh, red type female whereas, males are having red eye color because of presence of a single wild type allele. When these individuals are mated, we get females who are having two copies of wild type allele females who are having one copy of wild type allele, males who is having one copy of wild type allele and male who is having one copy of mutant allele. So, we get females who are all red eyed and males who are either red eyed and white eyed. The second cross which is a reciprocal cross which involves white eye female and red eye uh, male, when these individuals are mated, we get females who are having one copy of wild type allele and male who is having a uh, mutant allele. So, it is white eye. When these individuals are mated among themselves, we get females who are having white eye because they are having two copy of recessive allele and females who are red eye because they are having one copy of wild type allele. Males who are white eyed because they are having only one copy of uh, mutant allele and males who are red eye because they are having one copy of wild type allele. So, this established the X linkage in Drosophila. In Drosophila, the Y chromosome lacks homology with most genes on the X chromosome as is the case in the humans. The alleles on the X chromosomes of males will be expressed always because there is only one copy of X chromosome. Since males cannot be homozygous or heterozygous for X linked genes, they are referred to as hemizygous which is again a condition similar to that in humans and humans males are also referred to as hemizygous. There are no alternate alleles for uh, males. Therefore, there is no question of dominance and recessiveness in males in, in the genes which are present on X chromosome and which do not have any counterpart on the Y chromosome. So, any gene which is present on X chromosome will be represented in males whether it is in recessive condition that is whether it is a recessive uh, allele or whether it is a dominant allele. So, X linkage basically results in criss cross pattern of inheritance where phenotypic traits controlled by recessive X linked genes are passed from homozygous mothers to all sons. This happens because the females exhibiting a recessive trait contain the mutant allele on both the chromosome X chromosome. Since male offspring receive one of the mothers 2 X chromosome and are hemizygous for all alleles present on X chromosome, the sons will express the same recessive X linked trait as their mother. In humans, Many traits are controlled by X linked genes and these genes are again characterized by criss cross pattern of inheritance. One example being that of color blindness. Color blindness can be of deuterine type or proton type which respectively is insensitivity to green light and insensitivity to red light. 
individuals who are color blind cannot distinguish green color and red color it is not a deleterious situation but it might pose some practical problem for uh, humans who are having this particular illness or disease this particular plate represents the pedigree pattern or the inheritance pattern of the color blindness uh, alleles herein we can see that the male is a color blind who marries a normal female so one of the x chromosome passes passes to uh, his daughter and this daughter is a carrier for the mutant le this daughter will not express the color blindness syndrome or uh, disease but this daughter when it passes the x chromosome to its uh, to her son the son will be having only one copy of mutant allele and it will be expressed phenotypically in the male so the male will be again color blind so the pattern of inheritance is from father to daughter who is not expressing the phenotype and from daughter to her son so it is a criss cross pattern of inheritance which is represented in x linkage another disease which is x linked is hemophilia hemophilia is characterized by deficiency in the clotting factor in blood individuals who suffer from hemophilia they bleed profusely even from minor cuts there are two types of hemophilia namely hemophilia a which is a classical form of clotting deficiency and represents the majority of cases of hemophilia it is basically deficiency in clotting factor 8 and hemophilia b which is christmas disease which is deficiency of clotting factor 9 the symptoms of hemophilia can be mild to severe depending on the level of clotting factors most cases are mild but people with severe hemophilia experience symptoms which require continuous monitoring and care people with severe hemophilia often experience internal bleeding and the frequency of occurrence of this disease is very high in males this particular plate represent the uh, inheritance of hemophilia in the royal family of britain victoria queen victoria was the carrier for this particular disease uh, the mutation arises spontaneously in queen victoria and it was passed on to various members of the royal family the females were carrier whereas males uh, exhibited this particular hemophilia condition another disease is lesh nyan syndrome which is x linked disease is caused by a deficiency of enzyme hypoxanthine guanine phosphoribosyl transferase and it occurs in about 1 in 380000 live births the deficiency of this particular enzyme causes a build up of uric acid in all body fluids which leads to hyperuricemia and hyperuricosuria which are associated with severe gout and kidney problem and the individual suffering from this disease show self mutilating behaviors which can be characterized by lip and finger biting of the self another disease which is linked to x uh, x chromosome is that of duchenne muscular dystrophy it is a type of genetic disorder which is characterized by a progressive muscle degeneration and weakness it is caused because of an absence of protein known as dystrophin which helps in keeping the muscle cell intact the symptom appear usually between ages 3 and 5 and by the early teens the heart and respiratory muscles are also affected this disease primarily affect boys but in rare cases it can affect girls also the inheritance pattern of x linked recessive genes shows that males are primarily affected the carrier females are usually unaffected a son of a carrier mother has 50% risk to inherit the mutation there is no male to male transmission of the disorder affected males transmit the mutation to all daughters who would be carriers but not to any son and a criss cross pattern of inheritance is observed whereas the x linked dominant inheritance shows that it can occur as frequently in females as as in males so this particular uh, pattern of uh, x linked inheritance shows equal frequency of occurrence one example of disease linked to uh, x linked dominant inheritance is incontinentia pigmentae which is a genetic disorder affecting skin hair teeth nails and central nervous system and it is inherited in a x linked dominant manner uh, the inheritance pattern of x linked dominant gene shows that only one copy of disease allele on the x chromosome is required for an individual to be susceptible both males and females can be affected though males are more severely affected because they carry only one copy of the genes some x linked dominant disorder are lethal in males when a female is affected each pregnancy will have one in two chance for the offspring to inherit the diseased allele when a male is affected all his daughters will be affected but none of his sons will be affected so this particular 
plate shows inheritance pattern of y linked genes which transmit from father to son it can only be transferred to males and only from father to son y linked genes are also known as holandric genes and they uh, they are basically located on y chromosome y chromosome has a very few number of genes like sry and tdf gene and these are always passed from father to son now if we talk about pattern baldness in human males it appears that this uh, disease must be sex linked but is it sex linked it is not sex linked trait it is a sex influenced trait because this particular pattern is caused by autosomal genes which are responsible for contrasting phenotypes in both males and females however the expression of gene is dependent on the hormone constitution of the individual the heterozygous genotype exhibits one phenotype in one sex and the contrasting phenotype in other sex the autosomal genes are responsible for the contrasting phenotypes and it can be seen that females also suffer from pattern baldness however the same genotype might result in different phenotype in males as well as female here we can see that only in double uh, homozygous dominant condition of b gene female will be bald but male will be bald also in case of heterozygous condition so females will express uh, this particular phenotype in less severity and only if she is uh, homozygous dominant similar is the case with the uh, uh, with the appearance of horns in dorset horn sheep females will be having horns only when uh, the gene is present in double homozygous dominant uh, condition whereas males can uh, males can show this phenotype even in heterozygous condition now what about the milk producing ability of cattle is it uh, sex linked or is it sex lim uh, sex limited uh, gene or is is it sex influenced the milk producing ability of cattle is again dependent on uh, dependent on genes which are present on autosomes it is usually seen that cattle breeding centers offer semen of prized bulls for insemination of cows for production of female calves which will yield high quality and high quantity of milk uh, autosomal genes are responsible but the milk production phenotype is not found in uh, males it is only found in females so this is an example of a sex limited trait wherein autosomal genes are responsible for existence of the contrasting phenotype and the expression is dependent on hormone constitu constitution of the individual so these are the various uh, traits which are either sex linked or sex limited or sex influenced thank you dear friends scientists usually carry out a large number of experiments before they come to a conclusion and give their hypothesis 
each set of experiment is repeated n number of times because of, uh, before a conclusive evidence is put through. For any type of experiment, data is collected and this data is analyzed statistically to find out what exactly is the result for that particular experiment. Mendel also uh, con uh, uh, concluded a large number of experiments and uh, took the data and uh, co uh, collaborated the data and find, found out what exactly is that particular data telling him. So in day to day uh, experience of scientists, we need to find out statistical significance of any experiment. So today I will be talking about one such tool which helps us in finding out uh, whether a data which we have generated experimentally is significant or not. So today I will be talking about chi-square analysis for assessing data in genetic experiment. In this particular lecture I will be talking about why we need to do chi-square analysis for the data generated through experiment, about goodness of fit of any data, null hypothesis and alternate hypothesis, about how calculating chi-square values for a Mendelian uh, monohybrid cross can be done, about degree of freedom, about significance levels for any, uh, any value of chi-square, about assessing the data using chi-square analysis and assessing the data for modified Mendelian monohybrid ratio. I will also discuss assessing the data for uh, Mendelian dihybrid ratio and assessing the data for modi modified Mendelian dihybrid ratio. Then at the last I would be discussing chi-square test for categorized data. So the learning objectives for this particular lecture would be chi-square analysis for data obtained from experiments and testing the validity of the null hypothesis which we are uh, talking about. So before coming to the chi-square analysis, let me come to the background of uh, this particular statistical analysis. As we all know that in his experiments involving monohybrid and dihybrid crosses, Mendel obtained phenotypic ratios of 3 is to 1 and 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 respectively. For monohybrid crosses, the phenotypic ratios were 3 is to 1 and for dihybrid it was 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. However, did he always obtain the exact ratio of phenotypes for all the experiments he performed? Suppose he performed uh, inheritance of yellow and green color seed 10 times. Did he obtain 3 is to 1 ratio in all of his 10 experiments or uh, was there any deviation from this particular ratio? Mendel as we know carried out a large number of experiments and repeated them many times and he took various characters for studying at a particular time. In the cross between his tall and dwarf plants, out of a total of 1064 plants in the F2 progeny, 787 were tall and 277 were dwarf, giving a ratio of 2.84 is to 1. Similarly, the plants with green pods when crossed with plants bearing yellow pod, the F2 progeny showed 428 green and 152 yellow plants giving a ratio of 2.82 is to 1. So these particular results show that the ratio which he obtained was not exactly 3 is to 1. Now is the observed difference between his hypothesis of phenotypic ratio in monohybrid cross being 3 is to 1 between that and between the results he obtained of 2.84 is to 1 and 2.82 is to 1, is the observed difference significant or if, uh, is this particular difference not significant? How do we find that out? We can find that out using chi-square test. Now, the chi-square test is a goodness of fit test which helps us to calculate whether the observed results deviate too far from the expected result. The chi-square statistic compares the counts of the categorical responses between two or more independent groups. So it can be used in two ways, two different uh, methods. The chi-square is basically used to test whether the number of individuals in different category fit a null hypothesis, which is also termed as hypothesis of no difference or no effect. So basically chi-square analysis is being carried out to find out whether the experimental data is fitting into the null hypothesis which is, uh, which is proposed before the experiment is done. 
Now the chi-square test is also a measure of discrepancy between the observed result and some hypothetically expected result. So we are proposing a hypothesis that this must happen in this particular experiment and we must get these particular phenotypes in these particular ratios. And we observe a given phenotype in a given ratio in, as a final outcome of the experiment. Now we have to find out whether there is any discrepancy between the observed result and the expected result. Now this chi-square test is a conventional measure of goodness of fit which is calculated from the number of progenies observed in each of the various classes and this is compared with the number expected in each of the class on the basis of genetic hypothesis. When the experiments are repeated again and again, there might occur a deviation from the expected result and this is a normal occurrence in the scientific world. We cannot always get 3 is to 1 ratio for monohybrid cross or exact 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 ratio for a dihybrid cross. So chi-square test is used in such instances to test whether the deviation is significant or not. So it is used to test whether the deviation if it has occurred whether it is uh, due to chance alone or this deviation is because an incorrect hypothesis was proposed and there was an inappropriate testing of the hypothesis. So there are two possible, uh, re, uh, two possible causes for the deviation. One could be that chance factor is uh, playing a role and leading to deviation from, uh, of the expected uh, result from the observed result or there could be some other factor which is not chance factor, some other under underlying factor is causing this particular deviation which means that the hypothesis proposed is wrong and a new hypothesis is to be proposed for this particular set of experiments. Now the null hypothesis which is also known as hypothesis of no difference or no effect states that there is no difference between the observed and the expected data. It suggests that the variation seen between the observed and expected values is only by chance and it also states in the case of uh, uh, in, the, in another case is that the two variables are independent when we are testing two variables and using chi-square analysis for that. For example, if a scientist is studying butterfly and moths and he assumes that both uh, butterflies and moths they show different pollination pattern. And he hypothesizes that a single butterfly visiting a flower will pollinate with a higher efficiency than a single moth which will help in production of a greater number of seeds in the flower pod uh, in the flower which was visited by the butterfly. But the null hypothesis for this particular case will be that there is no difference between moth and butterflies in their pollinating efficiency and therefore there is no difference in the number of seeds produced by the flower they pollinate. An alternate hypothesis is also needed to be proposed along with the null hypothesis and this hypothesis is known as H1 or alternative hypothesis because it is an alternate to the null hypothesis. In this particular case the null uh, the alternate hypothesis will be that there is a difference in the pollinating efficiency between the butterflies and the moth. And the flowers which are visited by the butterflies, they produce significantly higher number of seeds as compared with the flowers which are visited by moths. The alternate hypothesis or H1 is also known as a hypothesis of difference or a hypothesis of effect. And it states that there is a substantial statistical deviation between the observed and the expected data. It means that the results are not random and did not occur by chance alone. Some outside force or a force within the organism is acting to produce the observed result. So whatever hypothesis we are proposing, some force which is beyond that particular, uh, that particular uh, hypothesis is acting on the individuals leading to production of the result which deviates significantly from the expected result. Now how do we go about testing the data for chi-square and testing to find out whether the deviation is significant or not. So the procedure for testing genetic hypothesis is enumerated here 
First of all, the first step which has to be undertaken whenever an experiment is carried out and the data is to be analyzed, the first step is stating the genetic hypothesis in detail, wherein the genotypes and phenotypes of the parents and possible progeny is always specified. This is the primary step in carrying out statistical analysis. Secondly, use the rules of probability to make explicit prediction of the types and proportion of progeny that should be observed if the genetic hypothesis is true. This is the second step that all the probability rules should be used. Third is convert the proportions to number of progeny. Whatever proportions of phenotype, uh, phenotype in progeny we are getting, those proportions have to be converted into the numbers of progeny. And for each class of progeny in turn, subtract the expected number from the observed number. Whatever value we get is squared. That means the difference between the expected number and the observed number is squared and it is divided by the expected number. Now the result is summed up and the total calculated uh, total is calculated for all the progeny and this summation is the value for the each of the progeny class and this is the uh, final uh, value of chi square for this particular experiment. So basically we are subtracting the expected number from the observed number, we are squaring the value and this particular value is getting divided by the expected number leading to uh, getting of a value which is, uh, which is then summed up for all the classes and that particular summed up value is the chi-square value for this particular experiment. In symbols, the calculation of chi-square is represented by the given uh, expression wherein chi-square is summation of observed minus expected whole square divided by expected value. The chi-square value is a reasonable measure of goodness of fit because the closer the observed numbers are to the expected numbers, the smaller is the value of chi-square. That means if the observed number of phenotype is quite close to uh, the expected numbers of the uh, different phenotype, it means that the fit, the data is fitting perfectly into this particular hypothesis. A chi-square value of 0 means that the observed numbers fit the expected numbers perfectly and the data is perfect for this particular hypothesis. Now, I can explain this, uh, this particular testing with the help of an example. Now, suppose for a monohybrid cross in pea plants, following phenotypes were obtained green colored pod plants were 27 in number and plants which produce yellow colored pods were 8 in number. Now since it is a monohybrid cross, the phenotypic ratio of Mendel's monohybrid cross is given by 3 is to 1 ratio. Now our job is to propose the hypothesis and calculate the proportion of each phenotypic class and convert the proportion to number of progeny. In this particular case, since it is a monohybrid cross, the expected value of the green phenotype will be 3x whereas the expected value for yellow phenotype will be x. x can be generated using this, uh, this particular ratio and the total number of phenotypes for both the classes. So 3x plus x equal to 27 plus 8 that is 4x will be equal to 35 or x as calculated is 8.75. So, the yellow colored pod is 8.75 which is the expected value for yellow colored phenotype and the expected value for green colored pod phenotype is 3x which can be obtained by multiplying 3 with x which is 8.75. So, 3 times 8.75 gives us the value of 26.25. So, the expected values of yellow colored pod are 8.75 and expected value of green colored pod is 26.25. So we have to state the null hypothesis for this particular experiment and the null hypothesis will be 
that the sample data which we have obtained fits into the Mendelian monohybrid cross phenotypic ratio. Whereas an alternate hypothesis also needs to be given. The alternate hypothesis states that the ratio of the phenotypes obtained in the experiment does not fit into Mendelian monohybrid cross ratio. Now, this is the table which shows calculation of various values. The green phenotype has observed values of 27 and yellow phenotype has observed value of 8. The expected values of green phenotype is 26.25 and that for yellow is 8.75. The value which we obtain after subtracting the expected value from observed values are 0.75 for green phenotype and minus 0.75 for the yellow phenotype. The uh, minus sign does not make a difference because in the next step we are going to square up these values. So observed minus expected whole square for green is 0.5625 and for yellow it is again 0.5625. The final value which we obtain for observed minus expected square divided by expected value is 0 0.02143 for green and 0 0.06429 for yellow. So total value of chi square for this particular experiment is sum of 0 0.02143 and 0 0.06429 which comes up to 0 0.08572. Now what is the significance of this value? If we have obtained this value what is the use of this value to us? Once the chi-square value has been calculated, the next step is to interpret whether this particular value represents a good fit or a bad fit. And this cannot be done by uh, this value itself. For this we will be, uh, we'll be using a table known as probability table. For any calculated value of chi-square, the appropriate number of degrees of freedom for that particular experiment gives the probability p that chance alone would produce a fit as bad or worse than actually observed when the genetic hypothesis or the genetic prediction are correct. To determine the p value corresponding to a calculated chi-square value, the number of degrees of freedom is required. Now the degree of freedom equals to the number of phenotypic class in an experiment minus 1 that is we subtract 1 from the total number of phenotypes uh, in that particular experiment for obtaining our degree of freedom for a given experiment. The reason for subtracting 1 being that in calculating expected numbers of progeny we make sure that the total number of progeny is the same as that observed. For this reason one of the classes of data is not free to contain any number which is specified by us. Because the expected number in one class must be adjusted to make the total come out correctly, one degree of freedom if of uh, one degree of freedom is lost in the experiment. This I can explain with an example. For example, if 34 sweets are to be distributed among three individuals, we can give any number of sweets to the first two individuals. But the number of sweets which are to be given to the third individual is predetermined. So say if, a, if the first individual is given 12 sweets and the second is given 15 sweets, then we do not have any choice but to give 7 sweets to the third individual. So we have lost 1 degree of freedom in this particular case. This means that we have only 2 degree of freedom for distribution of sweets which is equal to 1 subtracted from the from the total number of events which is, uh, which is uh, in this particular case 3 because we had to distribute sweets to 3 individuals. So for, a, uh, for this particular example for a monohybrid cross uh, which I was talking about earlier the degree of freedom will be number of phenotypes minus 1. The number of phenotypes in this particular case was 2 green colored pod and yellow colored pod. So the degree of freedom will be 2 minus 1 which is 1 which comes to 1. Now how much deviation can uh, we accept from the expected value? Suppose an experiment shows a very high deviation and another experiment shows very less deviation. Which one is appropriate? Which, which one particular data are we going to accept for that particular hypothesis? 
For that, we have to derive the level of significance. So, the level of significance for any experiment are, uh, is derived from p values, which is again derived from p table. In practice, the critical values of p are conventionally chosen as 0 0.05, which is equal to 5 percent level or 0 0.01, which is equal to 1 percent level. 0 0.05 can also be written as 95 percent confidence level. For p values ranging from 0.05 to 0 0.01, the probability that chance alone would lead a fit uh, lead to fit as bad or worse is between 1 in 20 and 1 in 100. If the p value is less uh, than 0 0.05 value in table, then the correctness of the hypothesis is considered very doubtful. However, if the p value is less than 0 0.01 value in the table, then it signifies that the probability that chance alone would lead to fit as bad or worse is less than 1 in 1000 and the result is said to be statistically highly significant leading to outright rejection of the null hypothesis. This particular plate shows different levels of significance with degree of freedom 4 and it represents how these values change with, uh, with different uh, degrees of freedom. This plate shows the p table wherein uh, the vertical columns represent the degree of freedom and the topmost horizontal column represents the p value or the probability value and against each degree of freedom is given a specific value for each, uh, for each uh, significance value. For, uh, for example, for degree of freedom 1 uh, at 0 0.95, uh, uh, 0 0.95 we have value of 0 0.004. So, we can look into this particular table similarly using different degrees of freedom and p value. So, for the above example, we, get, we are getting a value of 0 0.08572 for the chi square and for degree of freedom 1, this value lies in between the p values of 0 0.8 and 0 0.7, which implies that there is between 80 to 70 percent chance that the deviation observed in the data is due to chance alone. This suggests that the variation observed in the data is not significant and null hypothesis is failed to be rejected. Whenever we are talking about null hypothesis, we always say failed to be rejected because we do not accept any null hypothesis. We just say it has failed to be rejected. Now, testing, uh, testing the chi-square analysis for a modified Mendelian ratio, suppose an experiment was conducted in which purple uh, colored flowers were obtained, uh, the numbers were 345 pink color flower was 705 and plants producing white flowers was 267 and we are testing for uh, whether this particular pattern shows incomplete dominance or not. The null hypothesis for this case will be that the plants bearing different colored flowers are produced in a ratio according to incomplete dominance laws. An alternate hypothesis says that the data does not fit into incomplete dominance ratio. For incomplete dominance, the ratios are 1 by 4 is to 1 by 2 is to 1 by 4 which comes up as 1 is to 2 is to 1. Now, we calculate the proportion and convert the proportion to numbers of progeny. Expected value of purple, pink and white flowers are basically x, 2x and 3x and we calculate the value of x using the number of observed phenotype. So, x comes to be 329.25. Using the same table again, we find that O minus E square by E for all the different phenotypes is basically 0 0.7534, 3.28 and 11.77, the value which we arrived after using all, uh, taking into account all the parameters. The chi-square value for this experiment comes out to 15.8034. Now, we look for this particular value in the p-table against degree of freedom 2 because the number of phenotype is 3 in this particular case. So, degree of freedom will be 3 minus 1 which is 2. And we see that the value lies lower than the p-value of 0 0.001, which implies that there is less than 0.1 percent chance that the deviation observed in the data is, to due, is due to chance alone, which suggests that some other factor is playing a role here. So, the null hypothesis is rejected and alternate hypothesis is accepted and the data does not adhere to the partial dominance inheritance ratio. Now, testing this particular uh, particular chi-square analysis for a dihybrid ratio. Suppose there is an experiment wherein we get, uh, there is a dihybrid cross and we get four phenotype namely A, B, C, D and the numbers is 81, 22, 24 and 8. The null hypothesis for this case will be that the data fits into the dihybrid uh, Mendelian cross ratio and alternate hypothesis is that the data does not 
fit into the Mendelian dihybrid cross ratio. The phenotypic ratio for the dihybrid inheritance will be calculated and proportion will be converted to numbers. The expected value of A is 9x, for B it is 3x, for C it is 3x and for D it is x. So we will calculate the value of x by summing up the numbers of all the phenotypes which leads to uh, x value as 8.4375. Now we put all these values here in the table and we find out that O minus E square by E value for class A is 0.33749, for class B it is 0.43448 and for C it is 0 0.068, for D it is 0 0.02268. We can represent these values up to two decimal places. The summing up all these values gives us the final chi-square value for this particular experiment which comes as 0.8617. Now since there have been, uh, there are four phenotypic class for this experiment, the degree of freedom will be 1 less than 4 which will be 4 minus 1, 3. Now we, if we uh, see for the degree of freedom 3, the value of 0.8617 lies between the probability value of 0.8 and 0.9 which implies that there is between 80 to 90 percent chance that whatever deviation is being observed in the data is only because of chance. This suggests that the variation is in data is not significant therefore null hypothesis is failed to be rejected in this particular case. Now talking about a modified uh, dihybrid ratio and how the data can be uh, analyzed using chi-square analysis. Suppose uh, we take uh, we take a dihybrid cross where three phenotypes are got uh, gotten: uh, black flowers 13, white flowers 19, and pink flowers 47. Now we have to find out which modified Mendelian dihybrid ratio these phenotypes represent. So we will be again using uh, calculating the value of x for that. Since we know that dihybrid ratios exist in 16th, we'll be uh, summing up all the values and dividing them by 16 for getting value of 9, for uh, getting value of x. So the different ratios which we obtain are 9.159, 3.8 and 2.63 which appro approximates the ratio of 9 is to 4 is to 3 which is that of recessive epistasis. So null hypothesis is that the data fits into recessive epistasis and alternate is that it does not fit. We, ca we carry out all the calculations and we found, find out that the observed values uh, for pink, white and black are 0 0.14, 0 0.02 and 0 0.22 and the chi-square value is 0 0.39481. For degree of freedom 2, because there were only 3 phenotype, degree of freedom is 2, we find that the p-value lies between 0 0.8 and 0 0.9 for this particular experiment which tells us that there is 80 to 90 percent chance that deviation is due to chance. So the variation in the data is not significant, therefore the null hypothesis is failed to be rejected. So friends, this is how we use uh, the chi-square analysis for analyzing our genetic data in day-to-day -day experiment. Thank you. Uh, on that note, I would like to thank sir for this very enriching discussion and I would like to thank you dear friends for watching our show. Stay tuned and keep watching. Thank you.